Hello again. So I got to thinking about Florida and I was going to breakfast and I sat down at the table and the first song that came on over the loudspeaker was a whole lot of shaking going on. Whole lot of shaking going on. And I was like, oh, the four elements. Because Helene was a water event. Milton was more of a wind event with them unanticipated by most accounts massive tornado outbreak that preceded the actual landfall of Hurricane Milton which did not have nearly the same storm surge as Helene did right a wind event took off the roof of the Tropicana Stadium and now I have a whole lot of shaking going on and I'm thinking earthquake right I have no idea if there's any connection to Florida per se, but I'm wondering like Florida as a representation of America perhaps, and it's going to maybe get hit with all four elements in these maybe separate events. And then I was wondering, where's Mar-a-Lago? And, and how much of Florida might one consider a swamp uh, as far as draining the swamp? goes right where is mar-a-lago in relation to said swamp maybe whoever lives in that area might want it to be less swampy <laughs> so if they can manage to drain the swamp they would gain more land right from the land of lakes to a place of more land so these are the kinds of things I'm thinking. This song pops in there. And so I head home, right? Here I am. I'm looking up Mar-a-Lago. Where's Mar-a-Lago? Okay, it's over by Jupiter, <laughs> where I believe Tiger Woods had a DUI in Jupiter. Was it Neptune? I don't know. Both one of the Williams sisters and Tiger Woods, right around the same time, I think it was in the same month, had car accidents in Florida. Were they both in Florida? Yeah. And one of them was either in Jupiter or Neptune. I was like, wow! <laughs> you can get pulled over in Jupiter or Neptune, too. Anywho, that was a while back. I forget what month that was in. But last couple of years so I come home and I see okay half of the state is basically a swamp the whole southern half is a swamp and Mar-a-Lago is right on the coast Palm Beach right it doesn't look quite as swampy there but I think it, it basically there's possibly a little strip by the ocean that's less swampy but still, I didn't see any indications of how Florida would become like a mainland and an island. It doesn't have like a swamp in the middle that might sink, leaving an island to the south. That would like be the logical way I would think that might go down. No pun intended. But I'm not, I didn't see that as far as my map goes. I busted out my road atlas for that one because it actually shows the little swamp lines. All right, then I go in to look at the song. What's the history of the song, right? Well, there's a disputed copyrights who actually wrote the song. The most famous version is Jerry Lee Lewis. Okay, la, 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 It came out in 1955. Okay, let's start there. That's 2024 minus 1955 is 79 years, 70, I don't know. Don't remember the math. But the midpoint came to 1989. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. There was a big earthquake in 1989 in California. But just to double check, I looked it up. Yes, the Loma Prieto earthquake was on October 17th of 1989, one week from today, anniversary. And this is the midpoint between this year 
1955 when the song Whole Lot of Shaking Going On came out. So I still don't know if, what any connection to Florida might be at this point, right? I'm thinking, okay, now we've jumped coasts. Now we're in California, so can I really make a connection here? Well, so I reading down the wiki some more, and I come to the history of how the song came to be written. We were down in Pahokee, or Pahoti, or Pahotiki, I don't know the name of it, out on Lake Okeechobee, fishing and milking snakes out in the middle of the pond. This is a quotation from ostensibly at least one of the people attributed to writing the song. Hall. Somebody Hall. Okeechobee. The song was written based on an experience that a songwriter had in Florida, specifically Lake Okeechobee, which is darn close to Mar-a-Lago and Jupiter. Okay, now we've tied in Florida. I've already tied Florida and California together based on this town in Florida called Golden Gate. I don't remember the details of the Loma Prieto earthquake. I remember, I do, I remember some details like the collapse of the freeway, right? But I don't remember, I think it might have been L.A. area, but it might have been San Diego or one of the other many, many, many sand towns that pepper the coast of California, right? And the 1989 earthquake happened one week from today in 1989. Yeah, okay. That was the year I graduated high school. The song was recorded, whole lot of shaking going on, was, was recorded on my birthday in 1955. So, I think, heads up, earthquake. Yeah, possibly something coast to coast. We're connecting Florida and California, 1955, 1989. The song from this morning, the date being so close to next week for 1989, the song was from 1955, brings us to this year. The song was on my birthday in March. The earthquake was in October in 89, so you might, it might could go out a year as far as if you wanted to be exact with the isometrics. If you're going to be real, real precise and exact with the isometrics and go with the recorded date as opposed to the release date, which is not something I often do, that would push out a matching event to next year. But the release date is just listed as 1955. If it was recorded on my birthday, then it had to have happened sometime in the last three quarters of 1955. So if you say fall of 55 to fall of 89, that brings us to spring of 2025. Because it was an odd number of years in between 1955 and this year, that means you're going to end up with a half a year if you split it in half. But isometrics is often not that precise. And this is only one set of maths, right? We know if an event is going to happen, you'll see it from multiple mathematical perspectives. This is just one timeline from song to event to this year. That is not multiple mathematical perspectives. But I present it because this is how it was presented to me, you know, in my mind and on the radio at the restaurant and whatnot. So, <sighs> we're, we're buckled up, right? We have all of our limbs inside the ride and we're buckled in. Okay, good. Awesome. Love you.